It is Friday night and it's five o'clock somewhere. And this is the ASEA five. You know us, you love us. The regulars are here. Me, Dr. Maureen Hayes from Galveston, Texas. And I have Jim and Ann Glenn from San Antonio, Texas. Jim, as you know, is our big money man. And Ann, his beautiful wife, is our personal trainer and nutritionist. And of course, we have Dr. Lee Osler, our dentist extraordinaire, and the author of two books on Redox, Redox Matters and Healthy Matters. These are the yeah. books that explain the science behind the miracle that we call Redox. And we have a very special guest, a fan favorite that we love to have on our show, who we've invited back. And I'm going to let Dr. Lee take over and give the introduction that he deserves, Dr. Ray Dixon. So take it away, Lee. Well, thank you. I, I'll, I'll try and give him what he does deserve. <laughs> Dr. Ray Dixon is, <laughs> he's one of the best uh, ASEA friends I think I've found in this whole wide world. And he comes to us all the way from Thailand. He uh, hails from Australia, I think originally from the UK, but he's, if that's, if that's incorrect, let me know. But I think it's, I know he's got that down, that down under accent thing going really good. I hear uh, and I'm sure we all have the weird accent to him, but we love his. So he's, uh, he hails from Australia and has been a, uh, a chiropractor for probably four decades. Uh, a naturopath has done some osteopathic training. And he's now residing in Phuket, Thailand, where he came out of retirement to employ the principles of redox signaling to help more people to become healthy. And so uh, I think what we'd love to do, Ray, is to have you kind of kick in here and give us a little bit of a stage setting, if you would, and tell us your story. Like, where did this come from for you? And out of which left field did it hit you? Because I know at first you were a little... Uh, you were a little skeptical for a while, but uh, maybe you could go through that story, bring us up to speed, and then we'll we'll kind of go from there and develop the conversation from there. Thank you, everyone. So Adi Kap from Thailand, Phuket. Lovely day today at uh, about five past eight a.m. in the morning. So yes, thank you, everyone, Jim and Maureen and Lee for having me back once again. It's great fun to share our journeys with us here. It certainly did come from left field. Uh, I had no idea such a product had ever existed. I gave up looking for something special that would work, um, not just holistically, but universally. I, I, I looked for many, many years in 40 plus years of practice. Uh, I had hundreds of herbal med medicines, hundreds of homeopathics, nutritional supplements, Never found a, uh, a universal holy grail type product. Gave up looking. Um, probably 20, 25 years ago, I stopped looking for the universal because I didn't think there was one. Um, I was first told about a redox product in Australia by a heavyweight karate champion who was a personal friend and a patient of mine, Lorraine Babar. And she mentioned the, um, the redox to me uh, at a lunch because we were friends one day. I'm, I'm sorry to say I have no recollection of that lunch other than we had the lunch. So that shows you how uh, little attention I paid. I, um, I'd never heard of redox or redox signalling. Uh, I figured if there was something special about such a product, that I would probably have heard about it through the normal practitioner supply channels, whether it's an allopathic medicine with the drug pharmaceutical model or whether it's naturopathic. You know, a lot of our premium products filter down through practitioner supply companies. So there's kind of a back methodology where you get exposed to these things. And, of course, often they'll be mentioned at a seminar, a professional a continuing education seminar, none of which had ever happened. So probably accounting for me not paying too much attention. Two years later, uh, I had left my practice and retired essentially to come and live in Phuket. Now, that was five years ago in July, just gone. And a year later, Lorene came for a holiday. So she was staying right here in this house with her two lovely daughters. So needless to say, she had a captive audience. I couldn't run away. Um, she was in my house for two weeks. 
I also, though, had a lot of free time that I didn't have when I was in my practice life of 12-hour days full of appointments. Um, so I, she urged me again, but did it very diplomatically to take a look. So I looked at the testimonials first. Um, I happened to just, you know, be glancing through the Healthy Self site and I was just stunned. I really found them very, very difficult to believe. Uh, and all practitioners understand this. You know, these, these results that we get with a product like this is, is nothing short of miraculous often enough. And uh, the old saying is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So it doesn't always apply here, but it certainly is a theme that I think many of us run by. And uh, but, you know, I was still determined this time to do her justice because she was, we were having some nice holidays and, you know, going out on the elephants and patting the tigers and we were having a bit of fun. So I then would go to the science. I would look at, you know, some of the PubMed articles and I would go looking. We didn't have, unfortunately, Dr. Lee's books then. I would have been straight into those then. But I, I looked at Dr. Samuelson, Gary Samuelson, atomic medical physicist that stabilised the molecules, uh, the science of healing revealed. I looked at that book and, and I started to see, well, okay, I can understand now why I was not aware of redox signalling molecule or any product thereof because essentially it was new. And I think for the audience, it's really important to appreciate that, you know, things are new for quite a long time before they become mainstream. I mean, that's a 20, 30, 40-year journey. I mean, it took 50 years for people to become familiar with an antioxidant. Uh, so it's no, I think it was 20 years or so before penicillin was accepted. So it's no surprise when redox signaling molecules were first discovered in 1998, uh, thereabouts, and then increasing information through multiple studies rolling out in the last 20 years, that there had been no prior supplemented product. And then we can talk later, perhaps, Lee, about, well, why didn't it then come down through the practitioner uh, information suppliers? Because there's very good reasons for that as well. So, so I then kind of balanced these amazing stories with the credibility of the science all of a sudden. Note, redox signaling molecules are not just natural, they're native to the human body. So this is really a holy grail for all natural therapists of any kind because it is a natural product, it is a native product, it has no toxicity, it has no allergenicity, and it has no negative side effects whatsoever. I mean, this is like a kid in a candy shop for me. So it was just the perfect fit. So I got very excited, being the excitable person that I am, and I then started to, I got the product immediately. I've never stopped since, five years last July. I never will. And I was told at the outset by Dan Doyle, who had sponsored Lorene, that if you get involved with this product, stand by for miracles. And I, again, I took that with a, a bit of a grain of salt, although quietly confident now because I'd done some homework and praying that it was true because this is my uh, raison d'etre. This is what I live to do, help people uh, from a healing perspective. And, my God, it was true, and it is true, and I get now to celebrate that daily. Back to you. So, hey, uh, go ahead, Lee. I was going to say, uh, just maybe state or, or inform us, how has this changed you? You know, how has this impacted you personally? <clears throat> oh, well, on every level, Lee, on every level, it kind of brought me out of retirement uh, because I had found that holy grail, as I refer to it, that I was always looking for. I was physically well, so I'm not one of the people that came in with a life-changing health experience. Uh, I was a 60, I'm 66, 67 in November, I was 62, three then, thereabouts, when I got started five years back. And I, I, I had no, I was on no drug medications whatsoever and no known medical conditions. But, you know, uh, all the physicians here and listening would realise as you get older, you are more susceptible. My father had had prostate bladder cancer. My brother had had prostate cancer. 
my father had a touch of dementia. I'm aware of all these things. You know, one of the problems of being a physician is you know too much sometimes. So, so I, I, uh, I, I'm well aware of predispositions and ageing. Um, so I was always a supplement taker, uh, always will be. I now use the ASEA supplements because Redox Power to fit with the Redox model is, is, is even better for me. Um, so it's changed my life on every level. Physically, obviously, it's kept me as well as I ever was, uh, and I expect that to continue. Um, you know, uh, mentally and emotionally, it's given me back uh, the whole, it's just like a reinvention of myself and my reason for my life. So it's brought all that enthusiasm back to work with people. But the irony is I can do it with a lot more time freedom. So I can now zoom all over the world, which I do every day. I can reach people all over the world, which I could never do in a consultation room one-on-one -on -one with patients. Uh, Dr. Maureen mentioned this the other week, Jim, when you were impressed with how she put it the ripple effect. And it's extraordinary because I can have this amazing ripple effect and have thousands of people. I, I stopped counting when we got past 20 countries. That's all come out of Phuket. There's a large expat community in Phuket. So, and being an English speaker, not a Thai speaker, I've just rippled off all over the world, including my fastest line now is in the United States. <laughs> and that came from a French gentleman here who had uh, um, did memory issues, uh, what we get with age, the one most popularly known beginning with an A. And uh, I had that diagnosed at the local hospital. I knew what it was, but we needed confirmation. And in six weeks, his memories came back. Well, of course, his daughter is uh, having uh, living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with four autistic children and was in a pretty bad way herself. Miracles through the whole family. That line is now my fastest growing line in the world, in the US. So it's changed my life in every way, you know. It fulfills me even spiritually, Dr. Lee, because that's my, that's what I am. I, I consider I'm a facilitator or a healer, as some would say, or facilitating that, and it's given me back my mojo big time. <laughs> and you can never, ever lose that with a product like this. Lee, can you go ahead and do the disclaimer real quick, please? Yeah, this, this is an important thing that uh, we are a supplement company. We represent this product that ASEA has in the marketplace. And as such, we don't claim to make medical claims. We don't talk about specific diseases. This is not a cure um, or a resolution for uh, treating diseases as such. And so we make that really clear up front. That's right. And so, Ray, I'm brand new. I know. And we have a lot of we don't know who's watching and who's going to be watching the recording. Can you please explain what these molecules are and what they do? Right. <laughs> they, uh, they, they're made inside of every cell in the mitochondria. The mitochondria of your cell is what used to be and often still is referred to as the powerhouse. It's where you make your energy. So the ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is made in a, a lovely cycle, one of Maureen's favourites, called the Krebs cycle. And uh, a very complex, multiple-layered pathway, moving electrons to produce um, adenosine triphosphate. Now, through that process, um, redox signaling molecules are made, and they're made from a combination of hydrogen, uh, oxygen, uh, sodium chloride, otherwise known as salt water. Now, just remember, your cells are full of salt. And all around the cells, the um, extracellular fluid, interstitial fluid, it's called, is salt water. And your blood is predominantly salt water. So salt water is extremely important to your health and well-being. In fact, we would all be dead without it. The irony, very interesting to me, that these magic molecules are actually made in that Krebs cycle from a combination of those four elements of nitrogen, which we breathe. So there's never a shortage of nitrogen. It's the main gas in the air. And there's a multitude of them, up to 20 or so of these molecules. In the past era, before 1997, 1998, a number of them were known, but they were not known as 
signaling molecule. So I need to explain that in just a second. They were known as exhaust or seen and looked at as waste product oxidants in many respects that can potentially do damage. That's why we have antioxidants. Um, what was discovered uh, 1997, 1998, and ongoingly since and exploding is that, hang on a minute, they're not just exhaust. They are critical to human health. They are critical to cellular health. Now, cellular health is your health. Your hepatocyte cells are your liver. You know, your neurons and your oglia constitute your brain. Um, and all organs are cells. And they all, we now know, science knows, run on redox signaling molecules, the correct numbers and the correct balance. This is where the problem arises because we reach that uh, optimum balance of numbers at healthy puberty. And science has known long before we knew about redox molecules that the decline in mitochondrial density and efficiency is at the rate of 1% per year, 10% therefore per decade from puberty. Well, these are trillions and trillions of molecules per second, per minute, per hour, per day that are essential for the recognition of damage within cells, the response to heal that damage, the detoxification taking out the garbage processes and having uh, fulfilled all of those roles, equally responsible that if the cell is too badly damaged and goes rogue, uh, that the immune system, who are also cells, kill it, take it out. Uh, through um, a, a process of elimination so that you then don't replicate those rogue cells and develop tumorous type conditions. So this is, I, I mean, it's a whole new area. So no one knows, it's not, you can't relate it to nutrition. It's not a nutritional product. It's actually a bio-identical molecule to what the human body makes. It's a completely new arena unto itself. Okay, so I'm looking at the bottle, but yet it says it's a dietary supplement. Right. Okay, so yes. Lee, do you, do you want to take that, or Dr. Ray, do you want to take, I mean, why is it classified? I mean, because that's a, that's a stumbling block for a lot of people, and that, and you already said, it's made from salt water. Um, I, and then I'm going to, Lee? Yeah, I'm going to like, I'm going to defer this to Dr. Ray, because if I had to go to a new continent or a new planet, and take five people with me to help describe this, uh, he would be at the top of my list because he has such a gift for explaining it's, this whole process. So, Ray, take it away. <laughs> I love you too, Lee. <laughs> uh, the reason is because that's how it was registered, Jim. You know, how can you register a product as something that doesn't have a category of existence yet with the FDA? So if there's no new category for something that's native to the human body, but it's still natural, it's still native, and it is still replenishing technically a deficiency, why not? So, you know, you would register it exactly as was done as a supplement because you are supplementing, we are replenishing a lack of redox signaling molecules and correcting any of those imbalances. So I, I actually quite like the word supplement. Uh, the the uh, academic minded in the group, like Dr. Lee and I and Maureen, and you know, we, we also love the term bio replenishment formula. Thanks for leaving we, me out of that. Thanks for leaving me out of that group. I, I really appreciate that, Ray. I was just happy to be included. <laughs> Jim, you don't want to get... Anne's in that group, but not me. I'm the one that's course, left out. That's fine. I apologize, Anne. Of course <laughs> you can. So, so the academics of us in the, in the science biology world, well, obviously we would prefer the term bio-replenishment formula because bio is biology. It's the body, right. okay? Human biology is the human body. So if we're replenishing something the body is lacking, well, what do we all relate to? The past. 
And everything else that we related to was supplemental, was nutritional. Um, so it came from the outside and was needed from the outside. You know, so although we're making less of these molecules with age, we are still making them or we would not exist, we would be dead. So I think a supplement is still a perfectly applicable term until the world catches up in 50 years' time with what bioreplenishment means of something native to the human body. So I use the word supplement, I teach it, uh, I use the word deficiency, which, again, I've also pitched from the world of nutrition. But if you don't have enough, what else are you going to call it? So it's still an applicable term, deficient. So anyone on this call post uh, super healthy puberty, male or female, is technically deficient in the balance and the numbers of these redox signaling molecules. Hey, Maureen, Maureen, can you follow up with that and explain, explain why this is not a prescription? Because it was headed down that path. Why, well, why is this thing Ray's talking about a supplement or a replenishment and, and not something in the FDA drugs category? Right. Well, it was <clears throat> the original company that developed the technology was under FDA review and they had put it through a number of different clinical trials. The problem is, is that the gold standard for a drug has something called an LD50. It's sort of archaic. It's a lethal dose where 50% of the animals who are given the product or the drug perish. And it, it seemed that the more they gave the animals, the better they did. So they couldn't establish an LD50. They couldn't establish a toxic dose, which is a real blessing for us. So the FDA went to the company and said, you do not have a new drug here. That's what they were hoping for was a drug classification. They said, at best, you have a supplement. It's a totally different category. Um, and so you, their original company actually was selling off the technology. They were taken over by a mother company. They were having like a fire sale. Our founder happened to be one of the people on the board. Um, those of you who have heard about uh, Virtus Norton, he had been vice president of strategy for Kraft and General Foods for like 35 years, brilliant man, had retired, had worked for a biotech company, not the same one that developed this product, had worked with a biotech company for um, about five years, retired again from there, and then was asked to sit on the board of this struggling biotech company that had this incredible technology that was trying to raise the money, the capital, uh, to continue with their studies. When the FDA pulled the rug out from underneath of them, they lost their investors. As you can imagine, there's a lot of money in new drugs there's not that much money in new supplements and they didn't know what they had their hands on. Virtus put together a team of, of investors. They bought the rights to the technology. He hired Dr. Gary Samuelson and a team of, Dr. Samuelson is a, is a medical astro, uh, medical atomic physicist. Atomic medical. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he brought his group and they actually discovered how to stabilize the molecules in solution so that they could have a shelf life. Because originally, had to be made and it had to be ingested in a pretty quick time. So anyway, they decided they had all of the studies, they had all of the toxicity studies, they knew it was 100% non-toxic, very safe. They knew the power of the products. And even though those studies are in a vault now, you know, we don't have access to them because they are medical clinical studies. They decided to bring it to the people. And when my husband and I first got started about 10 years ago, we had the opportunity to have dinner um, with Virtus. And of course, you know, we're both physicians. My husband is a researcher. So we were kind of a little bit skeptical, a little bit cynical. And I said to him, why didn't you pursue that? Surely you could have gotten some sort of FDA approval. And he said, you know what? We could, we probably could have, but it would take another 10 years, probably mm -hmm. at least another $10 million. And if it was approved, it would have had one indication, which is how a drug works. You would have had to go to a physician to get it. And in that period of time, how many people would have suffered and not had the benefit of this product? He said, so we decided to bring it to the people and let science catch up with us. And that is exactly what's happening. So we're very blessed that it happened that way. And uh, like Dr. Uh, Ray says, you know, to have something like this, I'm a pain physician. I've written hundreds, if not thousands of medications, every one of them with a side effect, some of them with black boxes, often having to treat the side effects of the drugs that I'm using to try mm -hmm. to control. This is incredibly powerful, incredibly safe, and it's, it's truly a blessing. So makes it a miracle. 
So, well, real quick, Ray, um, a lot of medical people like you three call this the missing link. And guys, when we go out and talk to everyday people, come on. I mean, if there's anything out there that that smells like snake oil and, and I mean, this is it. But I'm serious. And that's really a huge hang up because it works on plants, animals and humans. You know, how did you deal with that, Ray? And then Lee and then Maureen, because it does. It seems absolutely impossible. If it's really real, then everybody would know about it. And that's what we hear all the time. How do you answer that, Ray? Well, I think because we are at the pioneering forefront of this complete paradigm shift in healing and what really heals, because we are in the middle of a revolution right now, <clears throat> and this product is leading that revolution. And what I mean by that, and this is why we have to face the flack, because the flack is from the past model of thinking. It's from the mechanistic medical paradigm, which is that <clears throat> we can interfere in the chemistry of the, of the body and make something better with the use of prescription drugs. Now, <clears throat> that has not been the only paradigm that's ever existed. It's just the one that gained precedence from the antibiotic area going back to Pasteur. But right back when Pasteur was there was another gentleman called Bouchamp. And Bouchamp emphasised not the germ theory and having to kill the germs, but he emphasised <clears throat> that your degree of sickness or in health or ill health may well be your environment that you provide the germ. So now you've got two sides of the equation. Now, if you extrapolate out what uh, fundamentally the philosophy that underpinned the Bichon model, it's that the environment matters most. Well, what's your environment dependent on? Clean air, clean water, clean food, optimum nutrition. That's what's providing the environment in your body. Um, now, to be truthful, the answer's in the middle of the two. There is no one fundamentally that has it all to themselves. But the medical drug model uh, that we've all grown up and been brainwashed into is very one-sided. It's extremely one-sided. That's why the entire natural healing movement has gained traction over our lifetimes, because it works. So people have exhausted the benefits from allopathic drugs and in many cases got fed up with them and the ill effects of them and jumped ship. So what they've done is they've actually gone across to a Chinese medicine doctor or an acupuncturist or a naturopath or a nutritionist like Anne and indeed integrative dentists like Dr Lee to get away from that model and found results. Now, this is a continuation of the vitalistic healing philosophy paradigm model, which says if you focus on providing the body with what it needs, take care of that environment, you're going to have maximum health and healing. And the name of the disease becomes irrelevant in that model, Jim. The problem is people are programmed into their diseases. I said once before and got a smile from Maureen, people are very attached to their diseases because they've been brainwashed into, oh, you have this, and this is the way we can try to help you with that. Um, so this whole model, and it comes back to what you are saying, how do we approach people? We've got to educate people. There's no other way. There's no shortcut. We have to shift their way of thinking and say, well, if you provide the body with the nutrients and nutrition and they get the basics of that, then your body will be healthy and it will heal itself. We don't need to name the disease. We don't need to claim this will cure that disease because you're falling back into the old model. All we have to explain is there is a new discovery 
It is the holy grail of all discoveries. It's the deepest signaling molecule ever found. And signaling means cells knowing what to do, how to do it, and fix sick cells. All of diseases are based on sick cells. So if we've got, and we do, the holy grail of what allows the body to heal itself, then watch what happens when you use the product. And when they say things to me, because I'll keep bringing it back to the medical model, well, you know, what about my drug medications? I say, what about them? This will not interfere with that whatsoever. Uh, do I need to come off my drugs? I say, you need to take care of that with your medical practitioner, but you do need to keep in contact with them because what often happens as your body heals is you don't need so much for them anymore and your doctor needs to follow that journey so that you can be addressed in needing less as you need less. So as much as there's no short um, one word sentence or, or sorry, a sentence or a paragraph that we can say, Jim, that's going to reach every person because people are all in a different headspace as well. Um, so it's really just having to go through the basics over and over and over again. And I'm sure that's what Dr. Lee finds, and Dr. Maureen and Anne as a nutritionist. You've got to go back to the fundamental sites. So a new discovery at the deepest level provides the body with what it needs. And as Dr. Lee would say, the inner doctor will then take care of the rest. So Anne actually talks about nutrition, that so many people have a different opinion about nutrition. Right. And Lee, I think you bring that up in your book as well. But with the foundation of redox, it's everything. Right. I mean, you, you can't have any other opinions about the basis of what redox is doing. But Lee, what did you think when you first saw this as being the holy grail? I mean, doesn't that honestly, as a medical, as a, what you do, doesn't this seem impossible? that it's really hard to believe this until you had your experience with your bride and then your daughter-in-law and now all the other people that you know, right? Exactly. I, the words holy grail were not in my vocabulary at the time, <laughs> but I'll tell you the words holy moly was because when my, when my uh, yeah. wife, when Dr. Lynn, uh, you know, suggested to us, go get some redox molecules, and I asked him, well, what is that? And he said, just go get some. It was mm -hmm. like, I, he wouldn't even explain it. It was kind of early in his uh, preceptorship with us as well. But when we did, and we had the holy moly, what just happened moment, it was uh, it was incredible. And, and from there, I, I guess, you know, I've told people I'm kind of intense in my brain. I had to figure out, well, how, where does the, uh, what's going on at the cell level? Where do, where do molecules move? And, I, and I'm telling you, if, if you're watching this on recording, if you just rewind your recording about 10 minutes and listen to what Dr. Ray just said yeah. about the whole concept of, of the difference between the medical models, the difference between intervention and prevention is the essence of what this is talking about. We have to intervene because we're living in a world that is adopted um, by and large a what it will call a, a modern, they, they call it traditional. I think traditional means something different, really. But it's certainly the modern medical, the Western medical model for intervening because of our lifestyles that make for sick health cells to happen. And so, you know, that that's where I came from was like, I just, I saw what was actually going on with my wife and then with my daughter-in-law and with other very significant close people where I knew there was no other way to explain this. There had to be something going on in, in a way that most of us, even traditionally trained, uh, again, I use that word, uh, don't couldn't understand and wrap our, wrap our head around because it's not pharmacological. This is not, this is not drugs looking for a receptor site with which to have an action on a downstream you know, uh, pathway. This is signaling, and as, as Ray points out, that's you know that's what I've written about is the idea of this is how you awaken your inner doctor because we are designed this way to heal if we're given the right things. That's how I saw it, Maureen. You, you know. yeah. Maureen, how how do you talk to another physician about this? I mean, because you've had some of your peers that 
think you're a little bit whacked out. I mean, right? Uh, I mean, really, I mean, you're you're a traditional MD. I mean, you're a medical doctor. And, and now you're doing this? Well, Bring it, one on real quick. I, I want to get his opinion. What's that, my husband? <laughs> Hey, he wants to join me. He, he likes my lifestyle, but yeah, when I first, you know, when I first started doing this and, you know, honestly, um, it's funny when I was listening to, you know, how we were all introduced, I'm thinking with Dr. Ray, I want to know when he, you know, came out of retirement, did he call people and say, you know, Eureka, I found it. You know, I found the missing link. I found the thing that I've been looking for the Holy grail. I mean, you know, because really that's what we, we have our hands on. We have, it's so foundational. And what I love about it, when I talk to other practitioners, I talk about if your car was a vehicle, you know, a lot of what we do is putting really high octane gas in the tank, right? Our nutrition, our supplements, all of that, even the clean air and, and clean water. Where this works is like in the engine. So it doesn't matter if you have a Lamborghini and you're putting really good stuff in the tank, it's still not going to run if your engine won't turn over. So what we're doing is fixing, fixing it at that level, that deep cellular level, because to get well, you have to fix the cell, right? So that's what I talk to other practitioners about, because it kind of is the missing link. And it's really interesting because like Dr. Ray, and even like Lee is now, you know, I was on a quest for many, many years. You've probably heard me tell the story. You know, I, I had treated patients for decades and, you know, my husband and I, both as physicians were walking to the hospital and I made the comment to him one time, didn't you think, you know, are, are you surprised that we come to work every day and the OR is full and the clinics are full and the hospital is full. And he said, what are you, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, you know, we've been practicing for decades. All of our friends have been practicing for decades. I just thought at some point in time, we would get ahead of it. You know, we would get everybody fixed and everybody cured and we could just come in and drink coffee and chit chat. And he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. And I was actually dead serious. I was like, you know, this isn't working, whatever we're doing, we're not making a difference in the health of, of the population. And so that started me, you know, I, I, I learned um, energy medicine and mind body got certified in acupuncture. And actually, when this came around, I'm sorry to say, I was not that open to it. When I first heard about it, I thought it was, it was ridiculous. You know, salt water. I live on an island. We're surrounded by salt water. I didn't think it was necessary to bottle it and pay for it. And I didn't understand. I'd never, like Dr. Ray was saying, I'd never heard that verbiage, redox signaling. And, you know, it's funny because when you were talking and gosh, we, we learn new stuff all the time. One of the most famous redox signaling molecules is nitric oxide. And you were talking about nitrogen being in the air. And I'm like, you know, our product is made from salt and water. Doesn't have any ends in it, but it does, it does interact with the air. So you wonder because some of the properties, you know, are, are interesting. So just something to, to think about. Maybe we can do a quantitative analysis and see what all is in there sometime. But, you know, it, it was a hard pill to swallow. I say it was a faith thing. It was a God thing. My husband had a huge medical challenge and I was like, I saw some of the studies back then. And what happened for me, which was really unique was I was talking to my sister about it. And my sister's not a doctor, a nurse or a, a medical person, but she is a medical editor at my medical school, the Medical University of South Carolina. And right at the time that I was talking to, you know, the person introduced this to me the second time, um, I was telling my sister about it. And I said, I've never even heard of redox signaling. And she said, well, I have. And I was like, how have you heard of redox signaling? And she said, well, we just got a ten and a half million dollar NIH grant to study redox signaling in heart disease, orthopedics, aging, cancer, diabetes, obesity, you name it. And she sent me the press release and I was like, oh my gosh. So the person who had told me about it was a computer sales guy. He knew about redox signaling and my sister, the medical editor knew about it. And I, as a physician, had never heard of it. And so it caused me to want to do a deep dive into it. And, and I, I count my blessings every day that I did. And I count my blessings that, you know, I got on it and I put my husband on it. And he not only got his health back, but so many other people that I, I love and care about. Just like you, Jim, just like um, Stephanie Lee, you know, so many people. And just like you, Dr. Ray, you know, sharing it more than 20 countries, you know, thousands of people all over the world. 
thank, thank God that we, we looked at this and thank God we're sharing it. So hey, hey, yeah. hey. Um, you were introduced to this by someone who is obviously well into the sports fitness uh, arena. I, could you maybe take a moment and just discuss how this applies to like athletes or the cellular performance for uh, performance? I mean, Lorraine, she was, she was the personal trainer for Russell Crowe in the Gladiator movie. I mean, she's, she's kind of ranked up there, you know, uh, in the global um, uh, levels of, in her sports and athletes. Could you maybe just kind of address and those who are just looking at this and haven't even thought of this, it's like, this is actually, this fits that. Well, absolutely, a completely different realm indeed. But uh, I always say, I knew Lorraine, I think I was in my 20s when she first came as a patient. Um, and uh, we knew each other for years. Um, we ended up doing karate at the same school with the same instructors. Of course, Lorraine was uh, younger than me and in a completely league of her own. Uh, she's probably the only female black belt karateka that would take out 90% of the male black belt karatekas. And I say that for obvious reasons. You don't normally, the men are a little stronger with the, the muscle mass. So, so, you know, I was talking about this yesterday, actually, because a gentleman came to see me here um, with low back pain, and he, he did it doing, and, he's, and he'd injured his knee doing Muay Thai, which, of course, is the martial art of, of Thailand. And I was talking about it to him in terms of athletic performance. So there's a couple of different components that are really critical for athletes. The first thing to remember is... All your athletic ability is based on cells. So it doesn't matter whether it's hand-eye coordination or whether it's skeletal muscles for running or sprinting or slow twitch fibers for marathons or triathlons and Ironman. It's all based on cells. You know, your heart cells, your cardiac myocytes have up to 14,000 mitochondria and they're producing masses of ATP and masses of redox signaling molecules. So if your athleticism runs on cells and your cells run on redox, it's a no-brainer to connect those dots, Dr. Lee, as you would say. So, and this is exactly what happens. And we have champions breaking their own records every year as they get older. I mean, that's not supposed to happen <laughs> because they're literally reverse aging. Their cells, when you get the replenishment of redox, your cells reverse their age doesn't matter what your chronological age is. The biological age is reversing. So anyone would know they could put two and two together. If my heart can pump my blood through my body quicker, my cells can get that oxygen and all the nutrients they need quicker, uh, the more I can produce ATP and then clear out the, the byproduct lactic acid and everything else more quickly, the more I'm going to be able to run, the harder I'm going to be able to run. And the quicker I'm going to recover when I stop running so I can get back to training again to get better again, which is the whole principle of athleticism and performance. It's being able to get back up, do it again, and take it to another level. Now, many people who have pushed that in the past, including people like Lorraine, burn out. They actually go into chronic fatigue uh, and they can't function for a while because if you're pushing that hard to reach that next level and you're depleted in redox and if you're not on what's in the blue bottle then you are you can burn out and that's why there is such a remarkable turnaround when uh, athletes get on redox and that's why we have world champions and no doubt with Lorraine Lorraine when she was introduced and started to use redox some years before me she'd actually moved past that time of her life where she was a world champion. Uh, she's still an awesome athlete, um, but she certainly wasn't in that age range to be, uh, you know, participating in world karate champions. But I think five times world heavyweight karate champion has never been beaten by a female. So to this day, as far as I'm aware, we're in that. So, you know, your athleticism runs on cells, cells run on redox. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I actually have a friend that used to bodybuild and I could tell that, you know, things are changing in her life age wise. And now she she can't do stuff that she obviously was doing then because she did get burned out. She did wear herself out so much that it it, it accelerated her aging. And then another friend of mine was an aerobic instructor, and she just she admitted that she just beat herself up so many years. And now she's suffering with surgery, this, that. And she's just barely now looking at the ASEA. But I was reading on your site and I um, like this quote and maybe you can elaborate. I'll ask you a question after this. But it, um, these products are just a way to build a, are not just a way to build a business. They are a way to build a better world. And I get to do that every day by speaking to people from all walks of life. I learn so much from other professionals who are as passionate as me. And then you say that the ASEA lifestyle has also changed the way you approach work between learning you know, about the business side, um, their ethos, their philosophy, and you've seen personal growth. So I'm just wondering, maybe you can elaborate how this has grown you, you know, differently than when you were doing, you know, before retirement, you know, when you were doing your practice. I mean, it because it's such a different kind of business. You, I'm I'm just thinking you've probably developed a lot of new friendships and now have thousands that you help, like you mentioned earlier, Maureen's mentioned about the ripple, but maybe you can elaborate on this uh, quote, the things I, you know, read on your site. Did I really write that? <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, it, it's How about you? Yes, I did write it. Um, I, I guess that the first comment in, in the mix was about probably traveling and meeting people. You know, I spent 40 plus years practicing in Croydon, Melbourne, Australia, and I would have loved to have interacted with people like Dr. Lee and Dr. Moray. Yeah. And it, it, it's such a dichotomous world, you know, where, you know, the allopathic doctor up the road doesn't care less about the chiropractor or the acupuncture around the corner. Uh, never the twain shall meet, no interaction to help that patient out there that really could do with help from everybody. Uh, I lived through that world, you know, when I became a naturopath at the age of 21, I was the quack doctor. Um, you know, uh, nutritional supplements only give you expensive new urine, uh, your diet provides you everything you need. That was the standard medical line. So you can still see I get a bit angry about that. Uh, of course, I don't hear the MD saying that too much anymore. Uh, and then, of course, by the time I finished practising in Melbourne, Australia, the medical doctors were called the quacks and most of the other people were coming to us. So, <laughs> so you know, I've lived through that whole circuit. Uh, and and I, like I said, I'm, I, one of my greatest joys with a seer is meeting people like Dr Lee and, and Dr Maureen and Dr Sylvester and Dr Walker and Dr Rick Michael and on and on the list goes. And, you know, I'm interacting more with medical health professionals in terms of allopathic than I ever did in my entire life. And hallelujah, man, I've been waiting for that. That's my holy grail, beyond the redox as a, as a physical uh, holy mm -hmm. grail. So I get to interact with people, like and Jim, and not, not just health professionals, but the gamut of good people. A seer is full of good people. You know, the corporate executives and owners are just unbelievable. I was with Tyler last month and Chuck in Kuala Lumpur. I'll be with them again, one or other, in Australia next month. Travelling I always love. I now travel more than ever. I've got more time freedom than ever. I've got more mojo because I'm able to achieve the results that I always wanted to achieve in life. I'm getting bigger and better results than I've ever had with anything else. And I still use some other things, but, you know, let me say it's because of this, the redox fund. And in that journey, and to top off what you were asking me, I mean, we're all on a life journey of um, fulfilling our Selves, finding ourselves, understanding why we're here, what we're doing here, and what contribution we can make along the way. Now, I reached those conclusions when I was 18 doing yoga, and I set about trying to fulfill that, and I'm continuing on that journey. So there's a great deal of self-improvement and 
you know, the positive mindsets and the imaging and all that. I learned from yoga in my 20s and late teens. But beyond that um, and finding uh, God in everything, that's a whole different mm-hmm. level. And uh, because it's there, it's just whether you are able to see it or not. And so the travelling of that journey for me is as exciting today as it was when I was 18 and is continuing thanks to the world of the sea. Now, of course, you know, God is in everything outside of us here too. <laughs> it's just that um, I've found a home which uh, provides me with a lot of time freedom uh, a lot of travel, which I love, and to meet the people uh, of like-minded spirit that I get to meet, both in the science world of the health industry and outside. So I don't think it can get any better, but let's see. Nice combination of two things, and uh, truly people can uh, believe, belong, and become, you know, when they are part of the ASEA family, they just need to hopefully somebody new might, you know, go get back to the person that invited you and learn more about not just the product side, because we've seen, you know, miraculous things, but also the the business side, because that that for us is a true miracle, too. So thank you. On, on that note, and if I might, because we, we haven't discussed the business so much, but, um, you know, I had someone the other day here, they run a charity for um, animals and th- there's a lot of sick animals, you know, not mm. cobra bites and, you know, not well taken care of as perhaps they could be sprays, etc. And And uh, one had been bit by a cobra and has some brain damage. Mm. Uh, and I was trying to help her save that dog with redox. I donated some. And then I was discussing this and you know because you know people talk about not being able to afford this a couple of points i'd like to make on that and and, and it comes to the business as well one this is the most extraordinary health product that has ever existed in the world now that's a statement that i will make categorically there has been no other singular health product that does what this product allows the body to do ever on that basis it will save you money i've got countless people that have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on their health that now are completely transformed on this product and will no longer be spending that kind of money in the future. Now, having said that, and this brings you back to the business side, you know, not everybody can afford it up front. Uh, But, you know, I said to someone yesterday, a, a different person, you know, I would much rather share this around the world, help as many people as I can and make a lot of money and then give some away. Uh, be charitable where I can and I can be a lot more charitable when I'm making money than when I'm not making money. Uh, so, you know, I, and that's another blessing that this has delivered me. Instead of being in retirement, not able to access a pension in Australia because I don't live in Australia. And, yes, that's true. Australia won't pay you your pension overseas. Uh, So I I then, I mean, are depleting my savings mode, aren't I, retired. You know, I can predict reasonably based on genes as well as what I take in the blue bottle. I'm probably going to, my mum's 89 right now. You know, I'm probably, you know, my dad died at 89. I'm probably going to make 90s. (laughs) You know, so just imagine depleting my finances right through and trying to get right along the way. I don't have that problem. You know, I actually make more income uh, now than in my latter years in practice in Australia without the outgoings. I'm not renting a shop. I'm not having to endure stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's cheaper to live in Thailand. So it's like I'm making a booming fortune. Uh, and, and yet I can travel the world and enjoy the journey and be more charitable as I am and as I will always continue to do. And hopefully the more I make, the more charitable I can be because that's the plan. And that's another blessing in itself. So for those out there, don't write off the business opportunity. You know, I, I, to this day, that person I mentioned before in Pittsburgh that started my largest line in the US, day one, she said, 
I couldn't sell it day one. Mm. Yeah. I said, well, I'm not asking you to sell it, but tell me something. I said, if you get the miraculous results that I believe you will, are you going to keep it a secret? Shouldn't. And she said, no. I said, mm. well, don't off that you mightn't be sharing it. She's now grown the largest line I've got in the United States. There's a couple of golds, a few silvers in there, and I can tell That's you there's going to be things uh, in the next two to three years. So that came from someone from the beginning who exactly stated, I cannot sell it. Right. Right. Maureen, share with the people why it's so important to keep your health. We're not just dealing with people that have health issues, but what about the people, speak to the people out there about your health is your best asset? Well, you know, as a physician, I'm sure we can all um, agree on this. You know, people will spend their health trying to get wealthy and then they get a bad diagnosis and they will literally spend every penny they have to either get back to a healthy state or, or get the health back of somebody that they love. And prevention is so key. And really where we're playing here, like Dr. Lee and Dr. Ray had said before, is in preventing, in taking care of ourselves before those things happen. And, right. you know, people don't realize that when you get that bad diagnosis, it didn't, it's not that one day you were healthy and the next day you weren't. That's been brewing for some time before you ever see the first symptom. And maybe you even discounted the symptoms. So if you had something that could actually help your cells heal themselves, turn on the inner doctor as Dr. Lee always teaches us. Why would you not want to do that? Because I promise you, I've been there with my family members. You get that diagnosis and you know, you talk about this being expensive. This is nothing compared to being sick. And I hate to exactly. put it in that way, but you know, let's help people get healthier. Right now, people are the sickest I think I've ever seen them in my career. And they're looking for, for some answers. And we, we may very well have the answer to prayer. Exactly. And more people that see the bottle at either a business or on somebody's kitchen counter or the Renew 28, we didn't get to talk about that, but that's such an easy and even self-performance an easy go-to sample. You know, maybe they don't wrap their, round, their brain around, you know, the redox signaling molecules, but if they could sample Renew 28 in five, 10 minutes or cell performance and see something in the first 15 or half hour, then we can get their attention and eventually lead them to the blue bottle. So that's what's so neat about, you know, our line is it's all intracellular and it's, it's just getting out there. Like you said, just plant a seed with enough people and it'll It'll grow like y'all's team. And of course, Lee is now silver, so we're excited for his growth. That's exciting. Hey. Yeah, Dr. Lee, Maureen. Quick. So sorry, Jim. When, when Dr. Oh, no, Lee Maureen addressed the prevention, you notice that she had a revelation once upon a time going to work where the world seemed to be getting sicker and the medical physician interventions didn't appear to be working because the proof was in front of the face. And yet other physicians with respect to her husband on the occasion, I should get it because <laughs> I come from that natural healing preventive tradition as well, which was always the main focus, of course, uh, prevention is better than cure. Uh, yeah. So what, what, what we would all like to see as having seen the light is that those hospitals have a lot less people in the May morning. I mean, yeah, emergency... Nice. Ordinary, and the medical fraternity have no competition, none at all. There is no person in the natural therapy realms that can treat people in an emergency situation like MDs, no one. So cue there and for that. But beyond that, the more we can save people ending up with chronic disease and in the need for those medical interventions, the better. Exactly. Yes. Well, another great time. Um, great out. You know, we just love doing this, guys. We just love sharing this gift with other people. And we just pray that you invite other people to come. If you're brand new, please get back to the person that brought you on the call. 
Uh, next week, we have Dr. Carolyn Hoffman, uh, another natural path, another fan favorite. I think everybody we have is a fan favorite. Uh, but then after that, we have someone that I'm really, really excited to have. Uh, we may actually have two different guests. Uh, one is a gentleman by, I think, Ray, you may know him. I think his name is Dan Doyle. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. And another gentleman is maybe Mal Sword uh, may also be joining us uh, next two weeks. Right. Uh, so Dr. Carolyn Hoffman is with us next week. Uh, and again, she uh, is a fan favorite. And then again, with Dan Doyle and and uh, Mal Sword, potentially. I know for sure Dan Doyle's lock, locked in good with us. So, um Lee, anything you want to wrap up with? No, I'm just so grateful for people like Dr. Ray, who has this golden tongue and golden understanding for, you know, this important aspect of our health. He has he's made many comments tonight that I hope I can just tattoo on my forehead and uh, be able to represent to people because it's it's just the way the it's the way the world spins. So thank you, Ray, for being a part of this and yeah. blessing our lives and letting us be a part of yours. Thank you. Thank you. Maureen. Oh my. Ray, it was as always fantastic. And like yeah. I said, I'm gonna be yeah. missing. I can't believe <clears throat> you have some such great lineup, and I'm gonna be missing for the next two weeks. I'll be traveling. So Dr. Ray, if you wanna put on the pearls and sit in my seat, you can even borrow my tiara if you want to. I was gonna say. <laughs> And he may need to get one of those bottles of whatever you bring on his uh, counter. <laughs> there it is. I hear it. Is. That, that, yeah. Yeah. Pelagresia. I'm so, now putting it into glasses so I don't look like I'm guzzling a very large. Don't piece. look like a bottle whiner. <laughs> you know, we think about all the the illness that's out there and a lot of stress uh, that people are experiencing, frankly, all over the world. Um Maureen, based on what you know, what is causing a lot of that stress with people? You know, most stress actually comes from finances, really. Um, that we have a lot of stress from our environment. But, you know, in all the years I practiced, one of the things that really broke my heart was that people couldn't afford to be healthy. They couldn't afford, you know, organic food. They couldn't afford gym memberships. They couldn't mm -hmm. afford all they, they were just chasing that almighty buck and living from paycheck to paycheck. And that really stresses people out and it makes them very unhealthy. And I love the fact that we have an answer for that as well. We don't talk as much as we should. And I love the way you put it, Dr. Ray, about not keeping it a secret, about sharing it with other people. Because I see us as educators and I have no problem with the, the business part of it. I'm sure you don't and Lee doesn't because we've always made our income by helping people have a better quality yeah. of health and better quality of life. And that's all we're doing here. So, you know, but we, and here's the thing, I say this all the time. When I stopped practicing medicine, they stopped sending me checks. It was yeah. very, I thought we had much, much closer relationship. You thought but, it would come forever. <laughs> yeah. But here you build a residual income. It's amazing. You know, and so even if you stop, like you were saying, Dr. Ray, if you travel, if you want to, to spend time with somebody and you're not focused on your business, those checks keep coming. Right. And you guys, that is a true gift. So we're yeah. blessed. Yeah. For me, Go ahead, Ray. For me, Maureen, it's even easier than that because when I travel, it doesn't matter whether I, I can't not share what I right. passion. So, so I'm passionate about helping people. So the conversation within minutes is going to land on some health issue for that person or their family. I'm going to provide the solution to that. So, you know, I don't need a holiday from something that I enjoy so much. So, yeah. you know, well, doing this, I don't need a holiday. What's a holiday? <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm right. living a permanent holiday. And like you said, I got to, because I've got a big team in the US right now, you know, when I'm sleeping, you're working, I get up in the morning and I'm going, whoa, there's been a bit of action. Except over here, my phone starts pinging, telling me how many associates have just joined and new customers and a good deal of them are coming out of the US while I sleep awesome well the, the thing i like to wrap it up with everybody is a networker whether you love it or not whether you dislike it or not everybody is a networker because we always share things that we like yep isn't it about time you get paid for it yeah
And that's what we do here. Our founder made the choice to give it back, not only the technology, but to give the gift of the financial blessing back to us. Whether you do it or not, because you don't have to do the business. But for those that are entrepreneurially minded, you tell me, what else is bigger than what we have our hands on? There's nothing out there that will be as big as this and gives the financial blessing like this will. Be open-minded to the entrepreneurially minded people that if you can think how big this is, and like we say, how are they going to hear about it is when we share. Invite them to come back next Friday, the ASEA 5. Uh, Dr. Dick Walker is going to have a show tomorrow with Dr. Maureen Hayes. In the morning. uh, Actually on discoverasea.com. Uh, Maureen, what time is that? Is it 10? 10 Central, 11 Eastern. Okay. And so that's going to be another great discussion. Guys, Invite. not everyone can come to this show. So it's really awesome that people like Dr. Walker and others, mm-hmm. uh, and actually uh, uh, Alan Noble will be getting back, I think in a week or two, uh, doing his presentation on Discover ASEA uh, every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central time. So This is why we do this. We're paying it forward. Please invite others to come join us and God bless. And we'll see you guys all next week. Thank you, Dr. Ray. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Dr. Ray. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much.